welcome to my plaiting vlog. This has been the most requested vlog I've ever had, so I'm finally getting around to doing it. So basically, I'm gonna firstly go over bathing because I have got NAF products, as you can see there, that were very kindly sent out to me. Ooh. So I'm gonna quickly use their lovely shampoo to bath Lara. That was a few days ago because it's, it was a different date. <laughs> And then I'm gonna show you how I plait up. These are ready to go eventing in about 10 minutes. So yeah, if you want to see how to achieve this look here, stay tuned and I will tell you everything. Um, so I've chosen Lara for this, A, because she's going out eventing today and B, because I have an absolute nightmare getting her clean. Obviously she's colored, so she's pure white. Like all of her legs are pure, pure white. She's just a nightmare to get clean. So I am working in collaboration with NAF for this video. So they've very kindly sent me some of their grooming and plaiting products to have a go with. Um, you'll probably all know NAF, they won't need much of an introduction. They're sort of renowned for doing horse health, horse care, horse grooming products. They do everything you can think of. I've used them since I was in Pony Club. Yeah, I've got like hundreds of NAF products on my yard, so it is really nice to have their support for this video. So we've got the Show Off Shampoo, which I'm going to be testing out on Lara. Yeah, I'm really excited to use this. It's meant to get rid of any dirt and stains, so that'll be exciting to use. Then we've got the Grooming Spray. It's sort of like a, works as well as a mane and tail detangler and like you can spray it all over their body, give them a nice show shine. And what I'm really excited to use it's the plait it up sort of like moussey jelly stuff. Um, I've not used this before, but I've really wanted something that's horse specific because I've tried using human gel and it either makes it really crunchy or it just doesn't hold it. So I'm really excited to use that. So yeah, without further ado, I will get Lara, start bathing her and plait her up and see what you guys think of my plaits. I bet they'll go terribly today, but we'll see, hope for the best. Okay, quickly for bathing. So I tend to have a soap bucket and an oil bucket. I've got hot water here because Lara's a bit pansy, like D. So, oops. Just gonna get a bit of this and squirt it into the water. Because you don't actually need that much soap on their body. Then I'll like just sponge that all over her. You can see it like there. And then for the bits I need extra white, like legs and stuff, I'll put it directly on her, like maybe her mane as well. Here comes the cob. Right, finished bathing. I'll show you how much shampoo I've used. I know you're gonna think it's really weird that I've not tied Lara up and she's now stood here without a head collar. Basically, she doesn't like being tied up. She pulls back and she panics. But then if you just trust her and don't tie her up, she's so good. She just stands. <laughs> and then I can't have a head collar to wash her face because the grub just comes off the head collar. So she just stands like that. But yeah, so I can't believe how little of this I've used. So bearing in mind, it was probably what, like there? I don't know if you can see it. So yeah, I've only used that much. Um, you'll see it always start with the legs. So I leave that on as long as possible so that like ferments gets all white look at her mane that's so white wow but yeah i have had an issue with lara's legs since i've bought her trying to get them clean there's a bit on this hock that has never been cleaned but i think this is the cleanest it's ever been using this shampoo um i am going to chalk her legs still i always chalk her legs but yeah i don't think i'll need to chalk anywhere else wait for her to dry she'll be clean you're such a good pony i'll just give her one last sweat scrape I also, I use a sweat scraper to like look for soap while I'm bathing. You might have seen on the time lapse, but I don't know if it happened too fast. How cute is this horse? You're just so adorable. I love you. You're so cute. Come on then, don't. Come on then. Don't want food. Come on. So next I'm going to use the NAF Shine On Grooming Spray. So she's still wet now. I always spray it all over when they're wet, spray it on her tail. Try not to get it on their mane too much, just because plaiting will make it harder. 
Um, so this should make her really, really shiny and like soft and um, detangle her tail. I might spray this on again at the show just before I get on, just on like her brown bits to make them glisten a bit, make them more shiny. So yeah, I'm gonna spray this on. Let's have a look, Lara. Lovely. Okay, I just had to come back and say this. This smells incredible. I just walked over to her and was like, oof. Got like a proper waft of, of this. It smells amazing. I've never been so close to a horse's bum before, smelling, and <laughs> not felt sick. <laughs> I'm gonna put a bit more on her tail. Oh, I've put the lock on. Bits coming out. Okay, brushing time. Okay, hello, I am back again for the plaiting tutorial. Basically, last time with Lara, I massively ran out of time because I was late for my event, so I had to stop filming. So I'm back again with Dee and Jam spectating. Uh, yeah, and I'm gonna plait Dee up and show you what I'm doing. Apologize for mum's filming in advance. So yeah, as you know, I'm working in collaboration with NAF for this vlog. So I'm using their NAF plait it up like mousse which makes their hair nice and sticky so it's an alternative to using gel which can make their hair quite sort of crusty this actually keeps it soft but quite sort of malleable to use um one thing i will say is doing it with lara i realize it's much much better if you do it on a dry mane lara's mane was wet and it just made it a bit too silky whereas when it's dry it makes it nice and sticky so it's really easy to hold and then everything stays in place yeah that's something i learned okay, okay. jammy so you'll see, look at that, it comes out in like a nice mousse. Mm. So I'm spreading it all over the mane, running it through with my fingers, trying to get quite a lot up at the roots because that's obviously where you get the annoying flyaway bits. I'm just gonna wipe that all the way down. Dee hates any form of product. Don't worry Dee, it's meant for horses. It's not gonna Checking. make your hair just fall out or anything. She doesn't like the smell. Oh, it's really raining now. Oh, typical. So yeah, I like to do this at the start because then once it dries a tiny bit, that's when it gets nice and sticky and it's really easy to hold their hair and pat them. So I think that should about do it. You don't want to go crazy. Like you don't want to have plaits that look like they're really fixed and horrible. So that looks about right. Still a natural look. So I'll divide her mane up now. Quick comb through, I have already combed her mane. It was also washed before this. I know loads of people say that you shouldn't plait a washed mane. I don't believe in that. I think wash your horse's mane. It looks so much better having a clean mane. So, divide it up. I've scraped down like that with a mane comb because then you get a nice straight line down there. That's what you want for plaits. That's the bit you see at the top, so it's gotta be neat. You can't just have a jiggly jaggedy line. And then, so for mine, I do, cause I have quite sort of nativey short types, sorry girls. I do big dressage plaits rather than like the tiny show jumpery or eventery plaits. So I tend to go for nine or 11, depending on how much of a neck I want them to have and how long I want them, their neck to look. So I just think that if you have fewer big plaits, it makes their necks actually look longer. Like it's not all cluttered up on their neck. Like it, it's nice and spaced out. It gives them a bit of a top line and it makes it look like they're taking their necks forward and up. So even if your horse doesn't naturally go sort of uphill and, you know, put their neck out, having fewer big plaits can sort of give you that look or at least help you on your way but yeah obviously it's up to you how you plait you know different people like different things so this is just how I personally prefer them to look and also on the note of trying to make their necks look better ever so slightly you don't look like crazy but make these end plaits a tiny bit smaller get them, make them look a tiny bit bigger in the middle and then it just gives that nice arched shape on their neck. Oh, Jam, you're angry. So these bits of mane down here are always a bit tricky because they get rubbed or they're thin or whatever. But 
they don't actually matter too much. The main plaits are the ones up there. These are mostly where your hands are, all the numbness, so don't get too stressed out about them. Okay, so divide it up into nine. Yep, that is a nine. Okay. So let's, uh, yeah, get plaiting. Mum, I think you should come a little bit closer for this. <laughs> okay, let's get going. So like I was saying about the bigger dressage plaits, I obviously thread mine. Um, so you kind of want to create like that kind of rose look and that's, so they like puff up a bit. So you don't actually need your plaits crazy, crazy tight. Should we take that away from her? <laughs> You'll get stroppy. It does. It does help not having your horse throw their head around, but most people's horses do, so we'll do it like this anyway. So yeah, you want to make it nice. Oh my god, Mum nearly fell off. <laughs> so try and get it as even as you can, like that. That's like the pretty bit that you see at the top. So then, the <laughs> you'll see that's actually quite loose, so that you can push it up and make that kind of rose look. So it's obviously not like crazy loose, but you don't want it plaited right to the skin. I think it must be uncomfortable for them as well. I personally don't really like that. So just plait all the way to the bottom. This bit down here, it really doesn't matter what it looks like. That's gonna be underneath. So you can do that quite quickly. Get to the bottom. I always have my band on that finger. Pull it over like that. Round a couple of times. Get that end bit, turn it under. Like so, <laughs> and then take the band around a few more times. Try and get that hair straight under there, like that. And that is the plait. So I'm going to do that all the way down, and then I'll be back to show you how to thread them. Right, Mum thinks I should show you another one for all of those who weren't actually concentrating. So divide it into three. I don't think I mentioned that first, but if you don't know that about plaiting, you need to go and watch a different vlog because you're way behind. So nice and pretty up there, as even as possible. D, you are really annoying. Come on. Bit loose like that. And then once you've got those first few bits done, D, you're having that hand taken away from you. Yeah, I think it would be a lot easier. <laughs> Plat down to the bottom. Good film, I keep losing her head. Band round. One, two, three. Underneath. One, two. Pull that round to back. Make it look neat. Three. Done. Super. Okay, we are all plaited down now. They're looking quite evenly spaced. Dee's been remarkably helpful. One thing I forgot to say, did you put your head up? Is when you divide these ones down here, um, you want to make sure that you're not, see where their sort of neck and their wither meets. You want that in the middle of a plait because otherwise it really separates the neck from their body. Whereas if that's in the middle, it sort of sews together their uh, neck and body, if you like. It just makes it, yeah, not look like they're separate. It gives it a nice round look. So it looks like they're going right away from the top of their ears in a nice round semicircle to their tail, if that makes sense. Dee, you're really being so unhelpful. Okay, right, so thread time. So I've attached a substantially long piece of thread to my needle. Don't worry, horse police out there, this is not a sharp needle, it doesn't hurt. Um, you can do it shorter, but I'm quite lazy. I want to do like three plaits with one bit of thread. So this is where the magic really happens, guys. You're gonna poke down through the bottom of the plait, like so, pull it all the way through until about there. Press that bit down and then Oops, why is that caught there? Wrap your thread round twice, poke it back down through the bottom of the plait. That's up. No, it isn't, that's down. When the plait's like that, I went like that. <laughs> Pull it nice and tight. So now that's pretty attached to your mane. God, I'm getting in a right tangle here. <laughs> so then you wanna go up underneath the plait, right through the middle, poke out between these two bits, 
Whatever you do, do not run the thread over those bits. They're your puffy bits. You want to protect them at all costs. So pull it under like that. I personally don't like securing my plaits here because I, I think it makes them look boxy. So I don't secure them there. I just pull it under and then just push that bit under like so. Have a little rearrange, make sure you're happy. So you can see it like that. I'm just pinching it there. Nice. Then obviously your thread is that side, so you want to come back down through the plait. And then you just go up and down for as many times as you think it needs to make it feel secure. Depends on the plait, on the horse's hair, so I tend to go quite a few times because the last thing you want is a plait coming out. Oh, it's on your ear, sorry D. <laughs> so yeah, up, down, up, down. This is probably my third time now. And you can good. you can sort of... If you're not happy with it, you, the thing I like about thread is you can move it around and then you can thread it so you can actually change quite a lot. Whereas if you've banded it, once you've wrapped those bands round, that's your lot really. So you can sort of tuck bits of hair in. So like, see that annoying bit of hair? I'm just gonna come a bit round the side. Poke it through. This is why you shouldn't do plaits too tight as well because it's really hard to get the needle through if you do it too tight. Right, so. See that annoying bit of hair? I'm just gonna bring the thread round, pull it down and get it to tuck it in, and it's gone. Super. Voila. So finish it off, poke it right down through the bottom, pull it nice and tight, get your scissors, cut it right up there. You don't need to knot it or anything. No, no, don't do a knot. If you've done it up and down enough times, it's not going to come out. Yeah. So yeah, you'll see, like, if you look at those two different, that's just got, like, another couple of centimetres height, so it's going to give her whole neck a bit more height. Lovely. So I'll thread the rest now. Do you reckon they need to see another one? Do you want to see another one? Okay, we're going to show you one more. Ignore Jam eating her straw. Mum refuses to put onto shavings. <laughs> so put it all the way through. Wrap round twice. Down. Why are you jabbing me in the back? Rude. <laughs> nice and tight. Up underneath, through the middle. Pull it all the way. It will tuck under like that. Don't secure it here. Be bold. Just wiggle it under. And then you can sort of push it up yourself. You'll see a big blob there. We like that blob. Lovely. And then up and down through. Obviously, you want to match the colour of the thread to your horse's mane. I think that goes without saying. But we'll say it to be safe. So that's a bit skew whiff there, so I'm going to try and rearrange that a bit. is complete give you a little look and then we'll go over the forelock i tend to just put a few more loops of thread in these sort of three down here just because that's where your hands go like they're going to get messed around a bit more so you want them a little bit sturdier but yeah these will not come out until you cut them out basically they are very secure using thread dd you don't look very happy the last dreaded bit, um, Dee hates things around her ears, so plaiting her forelock can be a bit stressful, but we'll give it a go. She's got a really, really thin forelock, so you can't actually do that nice a plait on her, but we'll try. Going to need lots of this on for the forelock. It's so thin and silky that you need it. You need lots of this on to make it sticky so you can actually hold it especially when they wave their head around. I'm just gonna squirt it over here so she doesn't think I'm squirting anything on her face. It's a nice big blob all up there. That's where you're gonna try and do the French bit. Oh, lovely, look at that. Stick all those flyaway bits down. Yeah, exactly, literally. <laughs> okay, good girl, Dee. Well done. 
This is weird you being this good. So you just want to take a little tiny bit from that side, tiny bit from this side. Whoops. And then, oh, just, there we go. And a little, oh, Dee Dee. A little bit from the middle. And then you just plait with the outside going in, basically. And every time you get back to an outside point, you take a tiny bit more hair and plait that over, like so. So you just keep going down, like I said with D. I mean, look, it doesn't really, you can't even really oh, see it. Oh, stupid stool. It's all right, D. Okay. So yeah, I can't really see what's going on on her head either. But it's basically, you just do this because it makes it a bit neater. It stops you getting like a big poofy bit on top of their head and making it like a unicorn. So just plait over, over. I never get too upset about what my forelock plait looks like because often they're dancing around and it's too hard to do anyway. But it just makes it a little bit neater like this. So sort of plait down to where the hair stops growing, like that. That looks awful. <laughs> I should show you a forelock plait with someone that's actually got a forelock. And then just plait it normally, like you would any other plait, all the way down. Dee, I wish you had more forelock. But at least there, like all the flyaway bits sort of get held together. And like I said, it doesn't puff up. I don't bother with all of that, it's a waste of time. So go under, because I've got all these annoying wispy bits, I'll fold under once like that, secure that, and then I'm just gonna tuck that under there. So look, there you go. Wispy bits, no more, it's all tucked in at the bottom. Grab my thread, try not to dangle it too much over their face, I found that annoys them. Maybe that just annoys moody mares, I don't know. So pull down, you can secure the wispy bits a bit more now, wrap that round like that, poke it through, and then you want to push it under, I go just a little bit up from where the hair has stopped growing, pull that under like that, and then for these, because it's a little bit longer, I'll roll it as opposed to like just do a fold in half, so... Good girl. Rolled under there. Poke down. Poke up. Oh, that's me looking through the screen there then. There you go. Oh, that's actually, for D, that's actually quite good. Because she's got barely any fall, I'm not gonna pull it crazy tight because I want it to look as big as possible. So I'm this is actually quite loose, but if you do it enough times, it'll be, it won't come out, it's fine. Just make sure you're getting it right through the bottom. Who's snoring? Lara. <laughs> God, he's about to fall asleep now. She's never this still to have a fall up plattered. I'll have to vlog it every time. It must yes, be this bedtime look, she only just sleep. Soothing asleep. tones of my voice. Yeah. Okay, so here is the finished result. I personally think she looks very good. Dee's gonna show you the NAF products we've used. Dee, please don't knock them off. So obviously we have had our show off here. So that's what I bathed her with. You can see she is immaculate. She's a hard horse to get clean, but she is very white where she's meant to be white. So that's been amazing. Then I used the Shine On. I sprayed that all over her when her coat was wet. So it's, it sort of spread around really nicely. I mean, you can't feel this, but she is incredibly silky. I also put it through her tail as a detangler. Uh, yeah, you can tell for yourself, it's very effective at doing that. And then we used the NAF Plat It Up. You can see it just there, so this is like a moussey kind of, yeah, moussey thing <laughs> that works similar to a gel, but without that annoying crustiness. 
So it just makes the hair sort of sticky so it's really easy to hold when you plait. And it also keeps the flyaway hairs down. So yeah, I really, really, really liked working with that because I find that gel can either make it too wet uh, and it doesn't actually do its job. It doesn't stop it from sliding through your fingers. And then like I said, it can give you this horrible crusty looking plait. So nobody likes that. But yeah, this is my finished plaiting look for D. I'll just bring you up close to the plaits here now. So you can see what I was saying about how you want them divided nice and straight. Uh, and what I was saying about their necks. So I personally think that makes her neck look a bit longer, having the fewer bigger plaits. And in terms of top line, you can see her neck actually ends there. And the plait has given her probably an inch. <laughs> Dee had to knock something off. Yeah, it's probably an inch of extra sort of neck and top line. So it just makes them look a lot more impressive. She's obviously a pony at the end of the day. She can't keep up with these warm bloods in terms of confirmation. So it's sort of up to us to do as much as we can to, yeah, make them look more like a dressage horse. There's her little itty bitty forelock there as well. Just about see that. Lovely stuff. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with those. Normally I'm a bit annoyed with my plaits, but that has been very helpful having the NAF product. So thank you very, very much, NAF. So do let me know if you've enjoyed this vlog, guys. I'm keen to do more like this. I meant to say her tail, I actually trim it like that. You can't really see it very well there. Um, but if you guys want me to do a tail plaiting and a tail trimming vlog, some of mine have been plaited, some of them have been trimmed, so I'm more than happy to do a vlog with all that in. So just let me know in the comments, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to link all of these products in the description below so you can get your hands on those. I wouldn't recommend them if I didn't believe in them. I'm not sponsored by NAF, it's just a video I'm doing with them. So it's completely my honest opinion. I wouldn't lie to you guys if I didn't like using the products. A, I wouldn't use them myself when I'm going eventing, and B, I wouldn't recommend them. But I've been really, really impressed with these and I'll certainly be using them in the future. And you can see I've barely used any of them. Like that's done two full horses. So they do last really well, they go really far. So yeah, highly recommend those. Massive, massive thank you to NAF for sending them out to me and helping me out with this video. But yeah, until next time, thank you very much and see you soon.